just have gym of the body. You got to have gym of the mind. Play a senior master level 2450 chess. Alex, <laughs> this is the true test of IQ. Can you survive a 2450 blitz? We're almost here at the photo shoot, doing something for bodybuilding with Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, the big Aristotle. This plane is fast. Citation 10, boy, fastest non-military jet. It seemed like we just took off from Puerto Rico. People are like, oh, you can get a bigger jet, that's a Gulfstream. I'm like, fuck bigger, I want faster. So I don't have to be in this damn thing all the time. Yeah, correct chest move is right there. It's there. The problem is it's a slow death. Speaking of chess, if you look at the Stanford Binet IQ test, which is kind of the standard built by a guy named Alfred Binet a hundred years ago, you have really two aspects to it, but you can add a third to traditional IQ. There's also emotional EQ, which is a separate subset, artistic, physical EQ, IQ, but you have what's called spatial IQ. Those are people who can become a chess master, generally have extremely high spatial IQ. You have verbal IQ, and then you can throw in mathematical IQ, which is, Alex has very high mathematical IQ. Spatial though, to be able to rotate things is a whole nother universe. If you look at like Mensa, which is a high IQ society, they talk a lot about this in their, in their they have a magazine they put out, but it's a tricky one. It's kind of like in business, people go, how high should you dream? Well, everybody's constrained by some things you're born with. We're going right now to do a shoot with Shaquille O'Neal. He's seven foot two, had those genetics. Not everybody, even if you eat your protein, you ain't gonna be seven two. Height is highly heritable. It's like correlations like 0.8 or, point or plus from your family. So in business, you also have max constraints. People like Jeff Bezos, this guy was built for business. He has a combination of, of you know, spatial, mathematical, verbal, and other skills that allows him to become a centibillionaire. And not everybody has that, and that's okay. Just like LeBron James or Ronaldo on the physical IQ scale are off the charts. Some people have vocal singing. So you always, you can't listen to what people say that you can be anything you wanna be. Yeah, you could be a chess player, but you can't just be a grandmaster. Yeah, you could be a singer in the shower, but not everybody. So it's a very narcissistic thing in the modern world that you can just be anything you put your mind to. Bullshit. I don't care who says it. There's no truth to that. There's no science. So the, the key to life is like finding your lane. Where is that place where you have maximum skill potentiality? And then you focus all your energy on that. And so that's why the Oracle of Delphi, the longest running piece of self-help advice on the walls of the, or of the Greek temple says, know thyself. So you have to know yourself. It's not everybody's gonna be a pro basketball player, a singer, but you can find something you can max out. You know, my grandfather, I always knew I could not be as good as him at chess. He had massive spatial IQ. He can remember the rotation of three boards three chess masters playing against him. That's something you're born with. You can't develop that. Real, I mean, no people argue and say you can develop it. But if you put equal time into it against somebody who has natural capacity and puts equal intensity, you'll lose. So it's better, you gotta, a good business person's like a general. You gotta retreat from the battlefronts where you could lose. Because you don't know, yeah, theoretically you could win, but you only have one life. So if you lose on the battlefield, it's game over. If you go after the wrong fucking career <laughs> and you lose, you only have one prime of your life, prime money-making years. So it's a matter of, of a battlefield general going, hey, I can win on that hill. Retreat and regroup and reinforce the hill you can win on. Everybody can win on a hill. Somebody can have a bigger hill than others, but everybody can win somewhere, but not everywhere. And that's the narcissism to think you can win everywhere. No, don't be a, don't be an IQ narcissist or an aptitude narcissist. Or in my life, people always, they always doubt me until I'm the biggest in the fucking game. Then they're like, I don't doubt you anymore.
just wait. With this e-com thing, we'll be the kings of the universe. It's very binary. People completely doubt you until all of a sudden you're the biggest in the world and they go, all right, all right. No, but I'm saying there's no transition. I remember when I started doing my social media, I think it was 2012, and I got these big forum guys in San Diego, like just randomly started posting like all this hate. These are guys never met me. I wasn't big. I wasn't doing like Lambos and girls. It was just like, I think subconsciously, if you study status hierarchy psychology, which is what most psychology is, what's happening is people subconsciously realize you're on their level. And so what's the first thing you do? The first thing people do is disparaging. So basically there's five levels of status hierarchy. In general, people don't make fun of handicapped people, for example, because handicapped people, people don't perceive them as a threat. Does that make sense? So like, if you're making a million dollars a year and there's a brand new entrepreneur, you usually don't disparage them, right? Because you don't consider them. So that's level one. Level two, most entrepreneurs are level three. So the second you hit level two, where you're up and coming, but not yet as big as them, they use various tactics, subcon- this is all subconscious. My pigs do the same thing. So do my chickens, so do my horses. It's a very animal species, you know, phylum kind of thing. Then when you hit their level, it becomes a very weird game of kind of being an ally sometimes, but sometimes talking behind your back when you're not there. When you go one level above them, they then people try to pull you back and they use different tactics. So that's where you use, you don't want to confront somebody who's stronger than you head on. So you use a lot of behind the scenes tactics. Now, when you go two levels above, people stop thinking they can ever become you and become your friend. So like Elon Musk is two to three notches. And a lot of people don't say, uh, they might say they don't like Bill Gates or something, but people don't say he's a bad businessman. Right, because he could pull out a trump card. So in the status hierarchy, what happens is people are talking crap to you till you're two notches ahead. So when you're one, they don't knock you. When you're two, three, four, they're talking shit. Then suddenly you become five, they realize they'll never catch up, and then they like you. And that's that's what I was so saying. Weird. <laughs> you think yeah. about it. Dude, my pigs and chickens. I stopped. I've gone to another level of psychology. I used to be interested in psychology. Now I'm just a biologist, which is the next level. So homo sapiens are just a slightly different version of my pigs and chickens and horses. The older I get, the more experience I get, the level of uniqueness of humans has gone down to almost zero. I used to be like, but humans are extra smart. And I'm like, nah, not anymore. I used to think that. I also met Robert Trivers, who's like the number one living biologist from Harvard. He's considered the father of modern biology. And I started talking to him one-on-one. That dude doesn't give a shit about homo sapiens. It's hard to talk to him about humans because he just brings it back to like the species level, Cells. the family level, the phylum level. There's no kind of like, oh, okay, homo sapiens. He doesn't find homo sapiens interesting, really. Got to Atlanta. Business is like chess. You have to move, make quick moves. It's like bullet chess. You know, you have to see yourself as the general of your business, of your life. You have to be tactical, move from hill to hill, incorporating strategy, know where you're strong, retreat from where you're weak, regroup forces and reposition them. You probably have employees that are underutilized and that could be repositioned. You probably have business products that you should retire, retreat from them, you know? Because it's just a big chess game. Really though, business, more than just chess, because chess is pretty much all skill. 
it's a combination. Business is a combination of chess meets backgammon meets poker. So chess is pure skill. That's the skill element of business. Backgammon is learning to play probabilities, but with no human interaction. There's not really. And poker is probabilities plus the psychological aspect because you can see your opponent and you can bluff and so on. In backgammon, you can't bluff, but you still learn probabilities. In chess, there's no real bluffing. So it's a combination of those. That's why I, I recommend people, the gym for the brain in addition to the body should be you play. I got chess app on my phone, poker, and I have backgammon. So playing all three, kind of, that, that kind of prepares the mind for the three aspects of business, you know? Okay.